This episode is brought to you by Microsoft Azure. Turn your ideas into reality with an Azure free account. Get everything you need to develop apps across cloud and hybrid environments, scale workloads, create cloud-connected mobile experiences, and so much more. Discover what you can create with popular services free for 12 months. Learn more at azure.com. That's A-Z-U-R-E dot com. And sign up for a free account to start building in the cloud today. It's more money with leading economist Steve Moore. Now, here's your host, Steve Moore. Welcome back, folks. This is the More Money Show on WABC Talk Radio, the number one talk radio station in these United States. And now I am very pleased to introduce my next guest, and that is the great Charlie Gasparino. Uh, you all know Charlie Gasparino from Fox News, from, from Fox Business Network. Uh, I think, we're, Charlie, but prior to that, were you with CNBC? I was at CNBC. I was at the Wall yep. Street Journal. I was, uh, <laughs> you, I was at you, you just follow me wherever I go. That's the problem, Charlie. <laughs> you and I have similar well, resumes. And uh, and you have a new book out, most importantly, <laughs> which is called Go Go Woke or Go Broke? Both. Go Woke, Go Broke. The radicalization. Go, go Woke, Go Broke. Okay. <laughs> There's a big difference between those two things. So what does that mean? Tell me what you're talking about. Well, I, I mean, listen, I... I'm a, as you know, I'm a business reporter, you know, yes. with fi- I'm a finance business. I also cover the confluence between business and politics. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I've been kind of sitting on this story for a long time. I've been noticing, uh, you know, a sort of shift in American, in corporate America's culture to the left. And I've noticed it yes. dramatically over the years. And, yes. and then it, it sort of boiled over during 2020. Uh, after George Floyd. And then yep. there was a reversal. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it occurred when, you know, wokeness in the boardroom reached its most absurd heights. And this was like yeah, it was like a back like a backlash. Yeah. But the backlash came as it went. It was it was foam. It was, you know, the wokeness was still there. But then it reached some weird, absurd heights in 2022 and 2023 yeah. Yeah, where yeah. these companies went nuts, totally yes, nuts, even more so. Um, like if you think they went crazy during the George Floyd riots with uh, with you know, DEI sessions and critical race theory seminars, you know, then they started you know putting trans influencers in beer commercials and in the, in a bubble bath half naked and you know busy yeah. flick, flicking in same sex kissing scenes weirdly mm-hmm. just gratuitously in cartoons and you know mm-hmm. and 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 Larry think you know, yeah really, even in children even in even like children's shows they're putting right in Disney they were well, that, doing and, this and, yeah. and that that's basically where you know the backlash began with the children not with you know adults um, yeah. uh, and then, you know, ESG, environmental, social government investing, literally mm-hmm. stoking inflation in, in 2021, 22, yeah. and a big backlash against that. And so I said, wow, there's a story here. There's a story about how we got to this place where mm-hmm. corporations, yeah. which are supposed to be making money and, and providing yeah. shareholder return, the old Milton yeah. Friedman shareholder capitalism, so it went from that to some like weird sort of leftist, you know, you know, sideshow. And well, they call um, it, they call it, they call it stakeholder capitalism, not right. shareholder capitalism. Oh, I know. That, I know. Well, that, that's one of the key inflection points in corporate yeah. America going woke when they defenestrated Milton Friedman's shareholder capitalism by the, the business roundtable, which is all the big companies, by the way, when yeah, they defenestrated right. them and put in this weird lefty theory of stakeholder capitalism and 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 all that led to what we had this, this sort of like weird thing that that occurred mainly after the george floyd thing where corporations went wild with the progressive virtue signaling right, right. and then there was a backlash and i and i you know one thing i noticed uh, you know one thing great about you know being non-woke as a reporter you know these the woke ms mainstream media gives you like a lot of running room with stories that they won't touch and this is one of them and that's yeah. in my book. It's just, it's a it's an investigative story. But I try to. Do, it's funny. Trust me. You you know one of the funniest things in the world is to write about you know CEOs acting idiotically woke, and you know it's all in there. Trust me. Larry Fink, Jamie Dimon, you name it, they're all in. 
making complete fools of themselves in being I, I think, <laughs> well, I think you're right. You're one of the few who's actually had the courage to write about this because it's very politically incorrect to take these people on. Uh, you must be uh, small minded if you don't agree with their left wing agenda. Right. And you're also right that corporations just caved into this stuff so willingly. And I happen to think, Charlie, and I'd like your response on this. I, I really think one of the most important things that happened in corporate America over the last couple of years was what happened with Bud Light. And I think that yeah. caught corporate America by total shock. They had no idea that there were actually conservatives in the country who had maybe half of their customers. And, uh, and you know, what uh, that company, Bud Light, probably permanently, you know, ruined that great brand and uh you uh, what their their market value went down by billions and billions of dollars and i think that was a wake-up call don't you yes and i and i trace how they got there i mean you got to realize anheuser-busch for many years was a family-owned b- business yeah that was all american you know we all yeah. remember Spuds well, McKenzie, the clydesdales and all that the right Clydesdale, the Spuds yeah. mckenzie the, the cute dog picking up the hot girls in the bikinis i mean that's that yeah. was what they stood for super bowl ads you know and um then one day everybody woke up and you know i i don't follow super you know i i don't cover budweiser every day so it was kind of a shock to me they, this trans influencer, Dylan Mulvaney, who's a very influential trans influencer. Remember, this 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 woman who's now a woman, man who was is now a woman, you know, did 365 days of girlhood chronicling her transition to from man to woman. Interviewed Joe Biden, where they talked about trans surgeries, where it was discussed about you know possibly you know laws that are curtailing this involving children, and it was it just this this person is, is an activist. And somehow she found her way into a Budweiser social media commercial. And how does that happen? And I, I trace it. And by the way, the company tried to blame it on a, like a wayward, you know, when, when, when the damage was done and the damage was severe. Bud Light was when this began, because this was a lot, a lot of this was involving Bud Light. She, Bill Mulvaney was half naked sipping a Bud Light in a bubble bath. Bud Light went from the number one beer. It's now the number three beer. So the damage is really done. Uh, but yeah. they tried to blame it on the, this woman in the marketing department. Oh, yeah. Said some, yeah, uh, right. Said, said some unfortunate things about that she wanted to change the fratty culture around Budweiser. But when right. I did my reporting, I found a couple of things. First off, this woman that they blamed on is a very good marketer. I mean, she comes up with great ads in the past. So I, I was saying to myself, like, how does someone this smart, this good yeah. go there with this? And what I found is that she was under pressure for DEI pressure to diversify. Really? And, yeah. and yes, and I, and because but I, Anheuser-Busch is no longer run by the Anheuser-Busch, the Bush family, right? It's run mm-hmm. by AB InBev, InBev, which now they changed yeah. the name to AB InBev, who are a bunch of Brazilian and Belgian Davos types. And they instilled DEI writ large. And I quote yep. them yep. talking about ESG yeah. and sustainability and diversity. Uh, you know, so she was under pressure to do stuff like this. And, you know, one uh, of the, you know, some of this is funny because, I mean, you know, this happened, you know, you know, and, but some of it's sad. Like, you know, I interviewed Ted Cruz for the book. He did an investigation. I don't know if people remember this. He did an investigation into this whole thing. And not because, you know, like how does, he, he wasn't, you know, concerned about how they got to Dylan Mulvaney, but he was more, what his investigation involved is whether Anheuser Bush or AB InBev violated the law by using her, Dylan Mulvaney in a, in a, in a, in a, um, in a, in a social media spot. And here's how, Steve. Remember, to go onto the Anheuser Busch website, you have to type in your, your birthday. I mean, you know, you can lie, but you know, it asks it wants to make sure kids aren't like indulging in alcohol, right? This is a yeah, right. very this is a very regulated industry, the, the yes, beverage, of course. spirits industry, right? Yeah. Um if you know anything about Dill Mulvaney, she is all over TikTok with her stuff on you know, her social media stuff. Her 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 following is like you know that TikTok is a following that trends to be very young, like underage young. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and and Cruz, it's an anecdote in the book where Cruz, like in his staff, found how she was you know masquerading as Eloise, one of the one of the young characters. Oh yes. In a, in a in a children's book where she says, "I'm Eloise. I am six. 
and she's dressed up like Eloise. Uh, and Cruz is like, you know, what is going on here? You know, is this like grooming? I mean, and this is who this is who Budweiser got involved with. And um, part of me feels sorry for Dylan Mulvaney. I'll tell you why, uh, Steve. They treated her like a like. It's, it's in addition to trying to pin, like stupidly try to pin it on a low a marketing person, which we know is it. I I I believe is not the case. This is about DEI. I mean, mainly, um, which is handed up from above. They they try to like make it like, oh, this is just one influence. This is Dylan Mulvaney, and they just screw her, throw her to the side. But they they hired her for a reason. She got a paycheck. They, you know, lawyers had to look at this. I mean, trust me, nothing is done at a beer company without lawyers. Um, and, you know, then they made it sound like she's just a rounding error when they, they went there for a reason. You don't hire her because she's not flamboyant. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. it was it's just it just shows you how these companies are, no, are both stupidly woke and so, stupidly tried to unwrap the yeah. rope, un- unwind so, the rope. Yeah. So the question, of course, is, you know, um, is this is this a bad that's, you know, I, I've been saying we've been at, we've reached peak woke and that it's kind of uh, down, on the down slide now. But um, how do you assess the situation? Yeah, I, I do agree with that. And the book shows that the last sort of quarter of the book is woke being unwound. The last chapter yeah. is called woke is finally broken. And yeah. it's listen, it's still going to be here. DEI officers still exist at companies and all that. But this is there, there's a radical reversal going on. I mean, Larry mm-hmm. Fink, who is Mr. Woke CEO, right? Yeah. The in environmental yeah. social governance investing has rolled it all back. In, yeah, in, he has. He really has. Model. He I, won't say ESG yeah. anymore. Yeah. I had lunch with him not long ago with about five or six other conservative leaders. And, you right. know, he was, he was, you know, saying, look, we're, we're putting this past us. We're just, we're in the business of making money. We're not trying to make social statements and political statements. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, and, and the truth is they have pushed, they have, moved away from this radical. Yeah. I mean, he was one of the leaders of the, he was one of the leaders of uh, the net zero and all of the, you know, oh, yeah. uh, climate change stuff. And he's backed off that a bit too. Now I give him credit in my book. because I actually like Larry. Um, I do too. He, sat down with, he, he sat down with me. I mean, he was honest about it. He was contrite, like where I went wrong. You know, I mean, that you yeah. got to give someone credit for that. Yeah, Most no, of these I other guys just, just hide, you know, they got their rear ends kicked. So now they're just hiding and, you know, they've, they've capitulated because they got their butt smacked a little bit here. Uh, Budweiser is the funniest one because I, as I showed the book, you know, they go from Dylan Mulvaney. Now they're in a sponsorship deal with the UFC and Dana White who's decidedly unwoke. And, <laughs> and, 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 and see, this is the funniest thing. I, I, in some of my reporting, I uncovered that they're thinking of doing with one of their brands, maybe not Bud Light, but another brand. They're thinking of sponsoring Dana's new uh, sport that he created called Power Slap. <laughs> Have you seen uh, this? Two guys stand up no. and they literally slap each other until one of them falls down. <laughs> it's, it's called Power Slap. So think about this. Bud See, that sounds fun. From, yeah, but it's the, the most unwoke thing in the world. So they go from Dylan Mulvaney naked in a right. bubble bath, giggling with a beer, to Power Slap. I mean, yeah. it just you, it just shows you that you know this thing is reversing. <laughs> So uh, one of the issues that uh, we've been working on is is this whole uh, you know war against fossil fuels, and right. uh, you still have a lot of you know the political class saying get rid of fossil fuels. We get eighty three percent of our energy from <laughs> from oil, gas, and coal, so we're a long, long way from being at net zero. How do you assess that movement? You know, you know, a lot of this hand gets handed down from the, the White House and from you know, broader public policy. And there's, you know, you know, some of this is depends on who gets elected, obviously. If, 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 if Biden and if, if, excuse me, if Kamala Harris and Walls get elected, there will be industrial policy. I think that, you know, yes. Yes. pushes, pushes companies to adopt net zero, um, or at least they'll try. I mean, you know, some of this is, some, some of this is like you need congressional buy-in and we don't know where Congress will go in that event. Uh, some of it, the administrative state is, is there's been some knocks, uh, some, some draw, you know, clawbacks of the administrative yeah. state's power, as you know, from the Supreme yeah. court. So that is, there's, there's, there's a little pressure to back off there, but you know, clearly the messaging from the white house, if it's the, if it's those two will be on this net zero, um, you know, pushing on yeah. net zero is the issue. Now, if it's Trump, it's just the opposite. And yeah, I was going to say, 
Yeah. <laughs> if Trump wins, there's not going to be a net zero policy. No. That is no, for no. sure. He loves the he loves the oil and gas industry. Um, so, Charlie, how do people get the book? It's called Go Woke, Go Broke. And uh, what's the best way to get the book? Best way, just order it on Amazon. Comes the next day. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually so easy. <laughs> I hate to say that. I hate to hurt yeah. like independent booksellers, but I mean, you know, I it, it, it literally is the easiest way to buy a book ever devised. So can I ask you one other quick question? Because we only, we've got sure. a minute, minute and a half. Ago, and we're going to have to finish. We're going to have to have a more complete conversation. I'd love to have you again. So, the, 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 you know, the woke movement really started in Silicon Valley. And one, one of the things that I find uh, kind of interesting about this is that, you know, we're free market guys, right? We want yeah. our industries to succeed. And, and so, but they make this peace with, the, with, you know, many anti- uh, business Democrats because, you know, they, they want to be uh, socially acceptable and so on. And I could never understand why these companies like Google and Apple and Amazon and all these others, you know, now they're under attack from the very left wingers that they sucked up to. And are they, do you think Silicon Valley is starting to realize some of the errors of their way? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you could see it in, you know, listen, there, there's always going to be a huge woke contingent in Silicon Valley. But clearly, you know, there's change. I mean, even Mark Zuckerberg came out and said, he, yeah. he thought, what did he say about Trump? It was the bad ass move that with his one after he got <laughs> right. shot. I mean, it was, right. And it really was. But in the past, he would never say that. Right. I mean, so. Yeah. Yeah, and, and by the way, it's not just him. It's Mark Andreessen. There, there's a, a growing contingent. Um, well, that's good news. Um, of still, yeah, and it is. And we, I should point out, though, that Woke didn't begin at Silicon Valley. It began yeah. at the U.N., my book traces, and then like it, it became like this sort of talking point at Davos in various ways, with yeah. ESG and DEI. Silicon Valley just manifested itself because just the, the notion, Silicon Valley's always been a lefty sort of California yeah. vibe, yeah. but e even that's changing, Steve. Yeah. Well, Charlie, we're up against a heartbreak. Great, great stuff. I can't wait to read the book. Uh, that's Charlie Enjoy. Gasparino of uh, Fox News, and his new book is Go Woke, Go Broke. This is the More Money Show on WBC. We'll be right back.